Thank you, Lee. Well, round seven brings us to Japan in Suzuka, one of the toughest circuits. We keep saying this every single week, one of the toughest circuits on the calendar, I would say. Uh, it's got, as Billy said earlier in the broadcast, there's a challenge in every single section of this circuit. And of course, as I've mentioned him, I am joined by Billy Munger. How you doing, mate? All good. Yeah, looking forward to this one. It should be, uh, like I say, a bit of a challenge. Hopefully we'll see some good racing like we saw the last few weeks. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, we'll find out very, very shortly. We've got three races for you this evening. First race, indeed, is 10 minutes of qualification. And then we've got race number two, uh, which is Carnage Race. We love race number two, where it is indeed a reverse rid of the results of race number one. And then we've got a feature race, the final race, which is 20 minutes, an extra five minutes longer. But it does indeed have the 10 minutes of qualification. I just realized I didn't introduce myself. My name is Luke Crane. Uh, I will be your commentator here today with Billy. And, uh, well, hopefully, like Billy said, we have some good racing for you. But Marta Garcia, who has been the biggest improver over the last few weeks and actually gaining the most points over the last few weeks currently is provisionally on pole position Billy. Yeah she's done a great great job in the last few weeks really improved really taken it to the likes of Visser and Sidorkova closing the gap and uh, yeah I'm really interested to see how she gets on this um, this week like I said this circuit it throws a bit of everything at you You've got fast corners slow tight chicanes uh, it's a very I think it's very a circuit that requires a lot of commitment and um, a real good sort of feel um, for the setup and the car, obviously it's a long, lot of fast flowing corners that lead into each other. So um, it's it's not a simple track to master. So I feel like confidence is key, and she's definitely gonna have that after the last two weeks. Yeah, for sure. She's been so so good. As we watched Sarah Moore there make it a little error, unfortunately. Uh, but that's one way of going through the degnus, that's for sure. And uh, well, the landing, we're gonna give her a 7.5 there for the landing, facing the right way. We love to see it on board then with Caitlin Wood. Currently, only six hundredths of a second off of pole position. As I say that, Paiska Visser makes it three tenths. Visser then does go into pole position, but will Caitlin Wood improve on her time? Across the line, she will indeed go, and it doesn't look like she has improved, but new driver. Two new drivers here today, Billy, which is going to be very, very interesting. We have got Grisham and we've got Jill Kova. Both of those drivers narrowly have missed out on an opportunity to drive in the W Series. Again, we mentioned at the start of the program that it's opportunity day today. That's going to be the key word. And, well, will they be able to throw the cat amongst the pigeons today and potentially get themselves in that top end fight? Well, this will really sort of put down a benchmark for the other girls because the other girls have been now competing for this will be the seventh round of the season. Uh, they've had a lot of practice, a lot of time under their belts of competing, racing, getting used to these cars, the sort of sim world in general. Um, so if these two girls can come in now, these young drivers, and deliver some top performances, um, I wouldn't expect them to be winning just because, like I say, the amount of time that these other girls have had in the seat now um, is quite substantial. But if they can at least put in a good show in, like, sort of keep it clean, get some consistent sort of finishes and points over the three races, um, and all for them they're going to be trying to do is just sort of open the eyes of the, the W Series um, staff and maybe say, look, this is what you missed out on. Yeah, it is an opportunity, uh, as we keep saying. Uh, we're on board then with Wood, who's currently in P4. Silokov has just chucked herself into the second row of the grid there in third position, two tenths off of the pace. Come through Spoon Curve here then. And, uh, well, as we come along the old start finish line, you'll see on your left-hand side there, there's a pit entrance. And uh, a lot of sim racers like to try and get through there as fast as they can during races. I don't think we're going to see that today, but it is fully open. Um, it's a very small, very short pit lane, but it is uh, definitely uh, accessible. As we come then towards that final chicane here on board and then with Caitlin Wood, as I've just stated. And well, can she improve on her time here currently with a 159.6? Wow, three and a half tenths of a second. I think this might be the final attempt here. And actually, Bicycle has just gone faster at 59.1. And now it's half a second that Caitlin Wood will need to find. And does Wood improve on the time? No, unfortunately not. So Visser looking pretty good here. Although Tasman Pepper is on a pretty good lap time. I think we just saw Naomi Shift there put it up into P11. Um, so are we going to see Tasman Pepper, who's been very, very quick over the last few weeks, currently in P8. Again, a little bit out of where she's been performing week in, week out. And again, she's kind of established herself as one of the top five drivers through that final chicane here then. And again, not much curb usage here, which is going to be, I think, uh, what everyone's going to be doing here. Use too much curb here, you're unsettled the car, and you're going to be in some serious trouble. Uh, so then we've come across the line here, and Tasman Pepper does not improve, I believe, across the line. Oh, seventh position. So she does just find a little bit of time there, but again, not enough. And actually, the big story here is that Jill Kova is right up there, P7 or P6 as it stands. But it is the usual names then at the front end, Billy. It is Vissa, Marta Garcia, Silva Kova, and Wood uh, in qualifying. Those four have been the quickest over week in, week out. Yeah, they really are sort of coming into 
a league of their own. Jill, Jill Kova as well doing a great job considering she's just come into the series uh, for this weekend as a guest driver. So there's uh, lots of names and faces that are putting in decent performances here. So let's see how the race unfolds. Yeah, so it is the usual drivers at the front end of the grid, which has come to expected, and uh, it probably goes to show how much preparation those individual drivers have been putting in. It's one of the toughest circuits, as Billy has pointed out. All in sort of development that these drivers have seen over the series so far. Here we are then, race one, round number seven, here at Suzuka circuit in Japan. Again, a big test for these drivers. We're about to see those red lights. Come on, my table. We're not going to see the red lights. We are indeed off and away here then at Suzuka. And well, it looks like Marta Garcia has got an absolute lightning bulb of start. It is a three, almost three wide then between the top three in our eSports League series. And well, Vice Vista runs a little bit wide out into turn number one. Opens the door then for Marta Garcia. She does not need two invitations as they come up through the S's for the first time. And well, it is Marta Garcia then off of a flyer into P1. Vista in P Two and Sinakova in P3. Wood is in P4 and Marty is in P5. So it is the front five as they qualify. Looks like the whole field have got off in one go here and there's not been any big issues. And as I say, that came a line and drops down. So there may have been some contact in the background. But as it stands then, it is as they qualify. Sinokova though, trying to find a little opportunity up towards the Degnes here. A bit of contact between her and Vista. And Sinokova was not on the brakes early enough there. She's not going to be in the fight for the win here in the early stages of the race. This is now going to be a big recovery drive. And we've seen this far too often, Billy, from Sinokova. Yeah, that was just a bit of a mistake there. She looked at the inside. Vista sort of defended it off fairly early. Um, oh, wow, we've got some real carnage going on in the background there. I don't know what who that was involving. I think it looks like uh, Tasman Pepper was involved, and that's, that's not good for her. Uh, lots of incidents and mistakes in this first lap. We saw Vista get her sort of... We've sort of become known to us that her only weakness seems to be her starts, and she got a bit of wheel spin. So things are not going quite as smoothly as she would have hoped. No, it's not on the ideal start here, but Silicova P8 because of that carnage there. Actually now P7, so she is making her way back through the pack as it stands. Looks like we've got Bell and Garcia who may have made an issue as well as you see her name tumble down the time uh, tower to the left-hand side then. But it is the lead for Marta Garcia. Again, didn't quite qualify uh, quickest in... Um, Qualification. She was very quick in practice, and actually, Bites Gavissa was the only one ahead of her. So, Marta Garcia has shown some serious pace, and she's actually been able to drive away due to the Sinokova and Bites Gavissa battle. Emma Kimmelainen, though, in P10, trying to make a move here on Hawkins up towards that final chicane. Wow, look at that. Straight through there, no questions asked, and actually able to just drive away here. And all of a sudden, you can see that Eaton now is right up in behind Hawkins as well. But at the end of lap number one, then it's Marta Garcia leading by one full second. So, out of that slipstream range just about. Uh, although Vissa may be able to just get a slight toe, but it's the battle in behind here for P3. Look at this, it is Wood, then Agron and Marty. These three drivers battling for that podium position as they come around the double apex turn number one. A very tough uh, corner indeed. Wood actually makes a bit of a mistake there, which means they can close up. But Billy, they're coming through the S's here. It's just about being ahead of a group of cars through the S's because it's very difficult to make a move through here. Yeah, that's the problem with following through such a high-speed section like this is you just lose front downforce, and what you end up doing is just sort of killing your tyres, especially in real life. Obviously, in the sort of the sim world as well, you still have degradation that you've got to take into play. And I mean, these girls and the young drivers that we see on the grid here now, they've really got to be learning and sort of adapting to different lines they need to do when they're following someone, and also getting prepared for the feet race because that's even longer, 20 minutes. Uh, t managing degradation and stuff like that is even more important. I think managing any contact with anybody is the biggest factor here. Any sort of front wing damage around a circuit like this, you are in serious trouble. So you need to just, for the first couple of laps, uh, it doesn't, you know, obviously, if you're Marta Garcia and you get a flyer and you go out into the lead, that's perfect. But ultimately, if you are in the battle of the mid-pack where we see all these incidents indeed happen, and that's just in any form of motorsport. That's not just this championship. That is everywhere. If you're in a mid-pack, that's where stuff goes down. Um, you've got to make sure you don't get any damage to your front wing because it's so downforce dependent around here and like billy was saying of course if you're following another car that's a whole different story you, you know if you've got a properly working front wing um you're still going to have a lack of downforce there because of the jet wash if you've got any damage to the rear, uh, front wing you know you've kind of made your job twice as difficult but at the end of lap number two as we near the end of lap number two marta garcia has been caught by about two and a half tenths of a second here. So Vissa has settled into a nice little rhythm here. She's going to be a bit closer. And of course, she had a little bit of a toe on the previous lap. And now she's going to have a lot more. Uh, but look at this little battle here then for, it looks like we're on board with Jessica Hawkins. So, oh, big tank slapper. And oh dear, collection there. Front wing gone. The whole stem of the front wing's gone. 
And Jessica Hawkins, the worst thing about this is she's just gone past the pit entrance. So she's not able to get that fast repair. So she's going to have to go either tow and lose a lap or she's going to have to just go around the circuit. And that is very unfortunate indeed. We're on board now with Neria Marty. Uh, Neri and Marty then currently in P5 is uh, battling with Agron. This is a nice little battle here. And Wood, by the way. So Wood's been able to drive away from this because of these two battling side by side. Again, it's one of those circuits that you have to take the optimum line to get the maximum lap time. That is a fact for any circuit, but especially around a circuit such as Suzuka. And, well, there's a Ferris wheel in the background there. Love to be here at nighttime. How cool would that be? It illuminates. It looks great. Uh, I don't know why. I just like lights, apparently. Um, but it is Marta Garcia and Vista that leading. But this battle here for P4, well... They've let Wood drive away here. And you were saying earlier, Billy, that Wood is someone to watch out for. And while she's in a very good spot now, as we actually watch a move here, Neri Marty up the inside of Kobayashi Corner. Kobayashi actually made five overtakes in one race round here uh, back in the day. So uh, that's why it's called Kobayashi. And as you can see then, uh, Neri Marty does indeed make that P4. But I tell you what, Agron is looking to bite back up here towards Spoon. Yeah, I mean, it looks quite obvious to me that Marty had a serious pace advantage over Agron there. Um... The fact that she was able to follow so closely through that first sector, which is such, like I said, high speed, and it's sort of the part of the track where following you are at a massive disadvantage. The fact that she was able to hang in there, it then provides you opportunities, like you say, into the hairpin uh, and up this long straight. Now you can see the, the advantage of being in the slipstream as Agron's now coming back towards Marty. And I think into this last chicane, we're going to see sort of some potential overtakes into the last chicane, but also if they get a clean exit on the main straight as well. This seems to be... I think in real life and in general, sort of the overtaking opportunity, um, obviously the, the guys in F1 are sort of helped by the DRS. They don't have this, but they have the slipstream. And uh, you can see Agron, uh, she's, for me, I think you should be following and being tucked right up behind in that situation. But maybe she's just happy to follow at this point in the race and try and catch up towards the podium positions. Yeah, maybe she's being pretty clever here. Maybe sort of already throwing away a potential P2 and, all, and thinking, do you know what? P6 is not that close behind, although... Sidokova is the P6, so that could that cap could come down very very quickly indeed. But yeah, I think Ma, uh, I think Agron might be uh, playing playing it a little bit safer here, maybe looking to get P4 later in the race, and uh, just wants to do it nice and cleanly here. And I tell you what, I was a bit I don't know pessimistic about Suzuka. Didn't think we we're going to see some uh, incredible racing. Well, we've seen some carnage, but we have seen some great racing here. And I tell you what, Pepper was involved earlier on in a big old accident here, but she now she's right up in behind Eaton. Eaton's moved up from P11 from the last time we saw her. And, uh, well, they're having a nice little battle here as well. So, again, Billy, we're starting to see every single week there's battles all along the grid. Yeah, we're seeing it, yeah, like I say, throughout the grid. Uh, Pepper again in that sort of same boat, just trying to hang on for that first sector. And here we've got Visser now, only about four attempts behind, and she's put herself in a good position. If she can nail the spoon corner here and just sort of keep tucked right up behind Marta Garcia, you see a little bit of difference in the line there. Marta Garcia was going a little bit wider to get the straighter exit, which she got. She got a clean exit off the corner. Visser normally when you have someone in front of you you normally try to just stay a little bit tighter through the corner to avoid that air wash that that comes off the back of the car in front and she did that fairly well i don't think she's going to be close enough to make a move into the last chicane but we have seen her make some late breaking maneuvers yeah both Kavita and Eve, she kind of has a range of either uh, one car length to about 40 from what we saw at Spa. So there's a big range for her to make overtakes and lunges up the inside. Uh, there's nothing that Bites Kavita can't do, actually, uh, from what we've seen over the last few weeks. But right now, she's got a big job on her hand. It's Marta Garcia leading then. It's now four tenths of a second. So it has been coming down lap after lap. And it's one of those circuits, again, if they do start battling around maybe sector one or sector two, they will hemorrhage time. Caitlin Wood, just keep an eye on Caitlin Wood. See that gap. See if it comes down. See if these two do indeed go side by side. How clever are they going to be? It's all about using your racing IQ around a circuit like this. You know, you've obviously got to think about yourself and your, your own position. But you've also got to think about the race and how that's going to go into affect your race over the long term. It's always about getting across that line as fast as you possibly can. Um, but as it stands, Marta Garcia is doing a stellar job in a defensive field, which we know she's got abundance of talent when it comes to defense. We've seen it week in, week out. All of a sudden, over the last couple of weeks, she really has, um, for the lack of a better term, hit that throttle pedal and just got a little bit faster. Grabbed a couple of extra tenths a lap, and she really is, I would say right now, pound for pound, probably the quickest driver on the circuit uh, or, or in the eSports League. Uh, but it is indeed still Vissa that leads the eSports League. So, uh, of course, can't counter out as it stands, but these two are the strongest as they come then up towards Spoon Curve for what would be, I guess, lap number five. Uh, but it is still Marta Garcia leading. Again, Caitlin Wood, is she going to be able to close that gap, though? She'll be hoping that these two indeed battle. Vissa, I think, 
It's just trying to keep Marta at an arm's length and maybe, again, like you said, Billy, Sector 1 and Sector 2 is all about just keeping yourself within that slipstream range and then sort of utilising Sector 3 and, of course, that big, long start finish straight. Yeah, she looks like she's in a much better position this lap as well. The gap's coming down. You can see Marta there sort of weaving across the track just to sort of avoid Vissa getting a real good slipstream. But she looks like she's got that. She's going into the last chicane. Is she going to go around the outside? Or are we going to see a switch back? I think Vissa, knowing her, she's going to try and get that exit. And that's a really good exit. And for me, Marta Garcia is going to have to do an amazing job to fend this off into turn one now. Cool. Was that a little bit of excitement in your voice there, Billy? I'm it's sure we just saw an excitable Billy there. I love it. Absolutely love it. They do indeed come across the start finish line to start lap number six here. And this has just about got her nose up in front here. And we know how good Marta Garcia is on the brakes. Pins that apex there beautifully. And she still holds on to the lead. But looking behind, Caitlin Wood will be looking at this. She's just about 3.8 seconds behind. And she'll be hoping that these two with the last sort of four minutes, 30 seconds to go here. I think we're going to have three more laps remaining of this race. She'll be hoping that these two just continue to go side by side and lose each other a lot of time. Actually, she's gained four tenths through that first sector already here. So keep an eye. I'm telling you, keep an eye on Caitlin Wood. I think this race could come into her hands over the next three laps. But it is still Marta Garcia and Visser. Again, you've just got to be so, so careful with Visser because she can dive you at any point and hit the apex, Billy. We've seen it before. And we see Marta Garcia actually run a little bit wide. Oh, wait, it wasn't, we it wasn't Marta Garcia. It wasn't. Yeah. It was uh, it Rodest. We're on board with Pepper and Rodest here. But you're right. It was. They're so close. I thought it was that battle. You can just see how close the battles are throughout the grid here. So this is our uh, Rodest and uh, Pepper here. So Pepper is a very similar position to what we saw from Visser and Garcia. She's just trying to stay in range through that first sector to allow her to close up when they get the slipstream of sector two and into sector three. Um, yeah, so at the minute, the gap's about seven temps, so she probably needs to close that down to about four temps at the end of this sector to really look like she can challenge. I'm not blaming you for that, Billy. I'm blaming the camera guy. It's just too fast for us today. Unbelievable stuff, though. But there are battles all over the circuit. Just that amplifies that view there. But look at this. Bites Gavissa in that slipstream once again, down and towards 130R. Two laps remaining. I tell you what, she's found herself a tiniest of little gaps here. No way around the outside. No way around the outside. Yes way around the outside. And Bites Gavissa, unbelievable move here. Move of the eSports series for sure. Takes the lead on Marta Garcia. That's incredible stuff. I think we've seen a little bit of excitement for you there, mate. Well played, Billy. Well played. But what a move that was there. 130R. It's just not a possibility, is it? That's incredible stuff. But I tell you what, Marta Garcia is not done here at all. She's trying to find a gap up the inside. Almost a bit of contact there. Bice Gavissa definitely would have felt the front wing there nearly go underneath the car of um, herself or from Marta Garcia. And I tell you what, this race is not over yet. That was some incredible driving. 130R, one of the fastest corners, high commitment. Uh, especially in these cars just about flat out so the fact that she got that slipstream we've seen it over the last three laps Visser that was really showed me her racing sort of ability and her knowledge as well the last three laps she's been getting closer and closer at that point of the circuit trying outside that sort of overtakes to get the switch back on that situation she just went straight around the outside with that pace advantage from the slipstream and uh, a great overtake we're seeing this between these two drivers week in, week out. I want more of this. I want this every single week. But again, look at that gap to third position. 2.7 seconds now. It has come down. And well, I tell you what, it's all about keeping within striking distance, of course, through the first two sectors. Such a technical circuit is Suzuka. And well, Marta Gar Garcia is just about in striking range then. Just got to get through Spoon Curve. Again, a double apex corner. Kind of the native corner around the, these parts of the world uh, as we come then up towards spoon just a bit of curve there grabbed by visa visa ooh, looked like the rear was stepping out of his slightly scrubbed a little bit of speed but again not too much of a of a worry so far but marta garcia then is now the bites Gavissa of last lap so she's in behind bites Gavissa. and well there's no way she's going to try and go around the outside like visa did is there but i don't think she's quite close enough here she's actually gonna have a little nibble up the inside 130 r it is and we know that Visser could go around the outside no problem whatsoever but now marta garcia takes the lead of the race down towards that final chicane she covers off Visser's attempt then round the outside and wow this is incredible action here we're on to the final lap of the race and billy it is anyone's race win right now these girls and these young drivers in general they're executing such good racing sort of maneuvers we've seen inside outside 130r is renowned for being one of the trickiest corners of any track in the world and we're seeing these girls go side by side it's such great action to watch and it's so much there's so much respect there as well it's so easy to just get a little bit careless leave not enough room and there'll be contact and that be their race over but 
like you said, over the last few weeks, we've seen this week in, week out of the girls really sort of getting to grips with this world of sim racing. And this is just as good wear at racing as you'd see in the real world. So for me, it's really great to watch. You are not wrong at all there. 130 are you can't overtake round there. Bites Gavissa, Marta Garcia. Hold my beer, hold my champagne, hold my gin. They've both made an overtake there. Incredible stuff. We've still got one more lap to go here. Is it going to be Marta Garcia or is it going to be Bites Gavissa that takes the victory here then as they come through the Degnas? And wow, this is up towards Kobayashi then for the final time. I'll tell you what, I have got my head in my hands right now because I'm expecting fireworks on these final couple of corners here. And there's a bit of a mistake there by Marta Garcia. Pressure starting to tell. But I'll tell you what, it's got a very fiery exit there, to be fair. So recovered nicely. But Bites Gavissa knows that she can make an overtake either up the inside, around the outside. She'd probably be able to teleport away through the car at this stage. She's got that many uh, skills in her skill set. Up towards Spoon Curve it is then. And through the first part here. Marta Garcia has just got enough of a gap here, I think, to be okay as they come in towards Spoon. So what about your exit speed here? And uh, yeah, warded off the pressure quite nicely. Again, for me, this has been battle of the eSports League series so far. And well, is it over? We've got, again, uh, this is the final lap here. We've got ourselves three corners to go. Through 130R, Marta Garcia has indeed warded off the pressure. Remember Spa, though. Bites Gavissa loves a little dive up the inside. Is she going to have a go? She's going to have to go around the long way here. It's all about your exit speed then. And i tell you what, she's got an absolute flyer through the first part then of the chicane. She is closing here. Round the final corner here then at Suzuka. And will it be Marta Garcia? Will it be Bites Gavissa that takes the victory? They're going to come across the line. There's a drag race here. Who's going to take it? It's going to be Marta Garcia. Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. Billy, who's got the win is Marta Garcia by three hundredths of a second. It's Bites Gavissa in second, and it is Wood in third. Take a breath, ladies and gentlemen. That was absolutely sensational in the commentary box. Incredible race. On the podium, you've got first, second, and third. Hand them both the first trophy. That was amazing stuff there. Um, but we need a break, so let's head over to Lee, who's with one of our drivers. Yeah, thanks, Luke. It's not just one driver who I've managed to find. It's two drivers and two who put up such a battle in race one. Uh, Marta, congratulations. You must be delighted, not just with the win, but also the quality of racing. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's been a great racing uh, with Weizke, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with, with it. Weizke, that was an incredible move. 130R around the outside. I don't think you see many people, if any people, doing that. Yeah, um, I got alongside her there. So, um, yeah, I just kept my foot stuck in and uh, made it around there. In terms of the respect that you two have for each other, that must make these moves easier because you maybe couldn't do that with everybody who was on your inside. Uh, does it actually matter who you're racing against, Bikeska? Um, I think if I was alongside anyone there, I would uh, keep my foot down. So that wouldn't make any difference. <laughs> And Marta, what about you? Because I know there is a level of respect. You both know how good you are when it comes to racing on track, and it seems to be the same in Sims as well. Mm. Well, I think it's the same that Bezke said. I mean, if someone was there, you obviously would do the same because in the end you're racing. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. Ladies, thank you so much for the moment. Two more races to go, so I hope you both have a good night. Thank you. Here we are then, ladies and gentlemen. Race number two, I have just about recovered here. And well, it is Belen Garcia and Tomaselli on the front row of the grid, which means they didn't have a great race, but the saving graces, they do start at the front here. And well, I tell you what, it's a very, very good start then from both of them. In actual for all fairness, there's a big bit of carnage there between two drivers. Oh dear, there's a car driving straight across the circuit there. And that is very unfortunate there. I think that might have been Hawkins, unfortunately then. But at the front end, it is Belen Garcia that gets away nicely. Thomas Ali in second, Koyama in third, then Grisham, new driver for this week, is in fourth position. Tasman Pepper is in fifth spot. Then we've got Piria, Eaton, Agron, Jill Kova is then ahead of Sidor Kova. Eaton's made a move then on Piria, or oh, actually no, Piria and uh, Eaton are going side by side through the S's. So that's, uh, again, we said we can't make overtakes through there. We just saw two crazy old action here, almost three wide in the background. We're on board then with Abby Eaton. Oh dear, that is a big mistake there by Vicky Piria, uh, and she's pirouetted through the S's there. That's not ideal. And I think I said that joke last week. I'm gonna stop saying that. Very poor. Through the Degners then we go, and it's Eaton, and that's a P6 under all sorts of pressure then from Jill Kova. Jill Kova will indeed want to try and get this position as soon as possible. In front of them, though, there's all sorts of action going on. We've got Pepper, Grisham and Koyama. Koyama then the cork in the bottle as it stands then as they come up towards Kobayashi. And has she held on to third position? Yes, just about. Pepper then has moved up a position here. Grisham has just dropped down from fourth. She was in fifth, 
then fourth, then fifth again. It's all going down here at Suzuka. You love to see it. But where are Marta Garcia and Visser? They're tenth and twelfth position right now. Visser in tenth. Marta Garcia is in 12th position. Still look over then, up to 8th spot then, as it stands. But again, another poor race one, unfortunately, for the Russian. Uh, but as we head then towards 130R for the first time, and well, it looks like Christian may have just made an error there. She's dropping right down the order as it stands. But it's Belen Garcia that leads. Tomaselli, 1.2 seconds behind. So she's doing what Tasman Pepper did uh, a few weeks ago, just getting off and driving away as Belen Garcia and just trying to get out that slipstream range. Tasman Pepper then uh, in behind Kuyama. And Kuyama, oh dear, not ideal then in a home race has just spun out at 130 hours so easy to do indeed you completely lose load of the car around 130 hours and you've just got to keep the input into the car and unfortunately i think she might have just coasted there uh, i think billy would be able to talk you through that a little bit better than i can and um, what i've just spotted as well is Vissa, who was having a great first lap she's now down right at the back of the field so i think she's been caught up in that car entry 130 r which would be very disappointing for her yeah, three wide, by the way, battling for third position by the looks of things. Pepper, Jilkova, and Agron. Um, it, no, it's not. It's for P4. Or, no, it's not. It's, sorry, it's for P6, I think. We've got Eaton, Marty, Marta Garcia, then coming through the pack here as well. We're on board then with Abby Eaton. Eaton then in behind Agron. So Agron leads this little pack here. Uh, Eaton in behind Marty and then Marta Garcia. And then in behind them is Caitlin Wood again. So Caitlin Wood is doing a very good job of getting a podium last time out. She is coming through the pack here as well. And like I said, that is a big, big big issue then for Vissa who looks like she's out of the race then probably taking a fast repair and well around a circuit such as this if you lose a lap you're very unlikely to catch up to the rest of the pack unless other people have a bit of carnage then through the Degnas you can see that Agron is doing a very good job then of holding uh, the rest of the field at bay as it stands then and Eaton there very much using the exit of that circuit to her best ability and actually has put herself under a little bit of pressure then uh, from Marty. Marty then with a move up the inside then through Kobe actually and I think she may indeed have that done there. Eaton there nearly with a little bit of contact as they come through the right hander up towards Spoon Curve then for the second time of this race. And they do go side by side. Eaton then has got the outside line. I think Marty's going to have a little nibble up the inside again here. You can see that Marta Garcia also wants to get this done. And Eaton, I tell you what, is just driven straight across there and a great defensive move had the perfect line to work with but i tell you what it's messed up her exit here and why you do not want to mess up your exit onto a back straight and you see the agron trying to break the slipstream she's not going to worry about those other four cars because they're worried about each other right now yeah and i think marta garcia here could be in a bit of trouble from behind because she seems to be getting boxed in as we see the car in front of her marty already gone to the outside and uh, I'm not too sure where Caitlin Wood is, but she's going to be putting a lot of pressure into Marta Garcia here. So this battle is just crazy. I mean, the action and how close these girls are running to each other on a circuit where it normally doesn't favour following closely, like we said before about the sort of losing the front downforce. It, we're just showing that these girls, they're committed, they're fighting for every position. doesn't matter if it's when race one, the reverse grid race. Uh, this action is really good to see. Yeah, it's just good, respectful driving, which is what we love to see. And actually, Marta Garcia then again in behind this battle here. We saw, oh dear, there's an over oversteer spin. That's not good. And Marta Garcia needs to be aware of those issues. This has already been caught up with uh, such things there. And actually, it's a fellow Spaniard, Marty, then that makes the mistake there, unfortunately. No one else around there to blame other than herself. Uh, and it's just so easy to do. Get on the power too early in these cars. You completely lose every sense of feel of the car and you just can't recover it uh, through the S's we come then. And well, Marta Garcia... I don't know, obviously she wants to be a little bit further ahead here, but now she's got a couple of laps to gather her thoughts and really, really hit those lap times. But I'll tell you what, we might be looking at another race victor here, ladies and gentlemen. Belen Garcia leads the way. It's 4.4 seconds. So even if Thomas Sally catches up to Belen Garcia, it still would be a new race winner. So it's going to be between the Spaniard and indeed the Brazilian. And it's been all about, all about the Spaniards here. Marta Garcia winning race number one. And well, the other Garcia, Belen, is looking to take her first victory here. What a drive so far. Yeah, it's been a great drive. She managed the race very well. Uh, I think the fact that we haven't been talking about her just shows how, what sort of league she's been in. She's not had anyone near her on track. She's been in a league of her own in this race. Really controlled drive. And I, the thing I wanted to highlight from that incident we saw earlier in the lap with Marta Garcia was just clearly... Oh, I don't know. We've got a change of position here for P2, I think. Yeah. Over might be yes. moving. Oh, they're side by side into 130R. Let's see if these two could manage to pull that one off. Oh, there's no way we can see another around the outside of 130R, is there? No, nope, we don't. There we go. So Jill Kova, indeed, using her iRacing expertise there. Just squeeze on the exit. Actually, uh, Tomaselli lost out there to Pepper as well. Uh, and you see that quite often 
leaning on your experience within either, you know, whether it be the actual formula you're driving, you know, drivers who've had a couple of seasons under their belt, or indeed within sim racing. And you see that Jill Kova is you know, huge on within iRacing. And she's just squeezed Tomaselli there right before the entrance of 130R, enough for then Tomaselli to really have to get off the gas and unfortunately lose out the pepper. Yeah, she just gave her not much room on it. She gave her enough room, but not a lot to play with. Uh, and I mean, that corner in general is really committed on the entry. So when you've got no room to play with, being committed from the outside and trusting that the person on the inside of you is going to turn in as well makes things a lot more difficult. And I think we just saw her there just make the decision to back off. Probably a bit too late, which is why she lost the momentum and then lost her further position to Pepper. Uh, and Agron actually now has got past her as well. So that must have been down this main straight into turn one. So Tomaselli falling a few positions within a space, a few corners there. Uh, so not a great lap from there, from her there. Yeah, you're right. It was down towards turn number one. Agron making a move of Tomaselli. Had the slipstream there side by side for the most part of that straight. But indeed, uh, a nice move there made by uh, our Norwegian driver, Agron. Uh, big mistake there in front. I'm not too sure. Well, that's one of the back. That must be one of the back markers. Um, but Marta Garcia now. You can see that the cars in front are a little bit more dispersed. I say they're a little bit more dispersed. No, they're not. They're closing up again now. And she would have been hoping that, you know, they were a little bit further away from each other. So she could, you know, sort of fight them one by one. But at this point in time, she's going to have to fight them uh, all at the same time. And actually, Caitlin Woods made a big mistake here now. There's three drivers here vying for what would be, I believe, P6. So can Marta Garcia indeed you know, pick them apart here she does she makes one move then around uh, the inside abby eaton then has got a job done as well uh, with tomaselli so marta garcia has got to try and overtake all three of these cars in quick succession and this is where the incident's going to happen again the reverse grid oh dear marta garcia is going to put herself on the outside here at 130 r it's almost going to be three wide here and she's there we go she's being very clever there that is called racing iq and she just backs off ever so slightly lets the other two crack on and can she make a late move then up the inside we're on board with Abby Eaton. She's all good here. And defensive move there by Tomaselli. And well, actually, Marta Garcia now being boxed in. As you said, Billy, she's been boxed in a few times. Now under pressure here from Caitlin Wood. And we know Wood's got the pace to be running at the front here. So that's not one of the drivers that Marta will want behind her. Yeah, she has got the benefit of the slipstream on Tomaselli. I think we see her now pulled to the outside. Around the outside at turn one, you've got to be so committed on the entry. Let's see how quick she turns in here. Very nice, very nice. You, you could see commitment. She gave the space on the inside. Uh, and actually, with it being sort of a double apex first corner, she managed to get it back to the inside for the exit of turn one. And she's got a good gap now, so she can now focus on Abby Eaton in front of her. Yeah, how it's changed for Tomaselli. Once in second position in this race, now with six minutes to go, finds herself down in P7. And actually with Caitlin Wood right up and behind her. And again, Caitlin Wood just following Marta Garcia through the pack here. It's not going to be enough points really to close the championship lead up hugely. But Marta Garcia, she can gain another couple of spots, maybe get a podium. There's a huge opportunity here. Although Vissa, by the way, is already back into the points here. She's in the top 15. But again, it's not going to make too much of a difference. You know, 15th, 14th, 13th, 12th. You know, if Garcia can go and get a podium here and what she's got to work with. She has actually only got three seconds to work with um, in terms of Eaton and Agron. So she could get those drivers with the next five and a half minutes. We're aboard them with Agron. And this is going to help uh, Garcia as well. She might want to maybe push towards a podium. If Agron can close up then to Pepper and these two start fighting, there's every opportunity. Silicova, by the way, down in P12. So as it stands then, our eSports League standings is, of course, Vissa that led coming into this round. Uh, I mean, it's almost an unassailable lead, even if she fin didn't finish in each of uh, these races here at Suzuka. Uh, but today, she's not going to score huge points in race two. She only came second in race number one, only second. <laughs> um, but it was Garcia that indeed got the race victory. So Sidokova has had a bad race one and a bad race two. So Marta Garcia, I think by the end of this race, may be second in the standings, which will be absolutely huge. Over the last few weeks, she's just came up from around about sixth in the championship. So she wasn't looking like one of the ultra strong drivers. And all of a sudden, she's looking like the strongest. Yeah, she's been consistent. She's developed in the area she needed to. Uh, I've seen a lot of times in this race alone that uh, sort of the option to, to go for an aggressive manoeuvre was there, but it would have probably cost her in some cases uh, her actual track position because there's been a lot of incidents that she's done well to avoid. We're going to see her now attempt the same turn one manoeuvre, but yeah, not quite as uh, committed on the entry. Saw Abby Eaton there sending a lot of speed in. Uh, and that's the thing there with turn one. If the person on the inside really attacks the entry, no matter if you're on the outside or not, it's, it's very difficult to judge the line and sort of with it being a double apex corner, eventually you've got to get back down to the apex, um, which yeah. makes things tricky. 
yeah, you don't want to put yourself on the outside of a car there that's really committed because they're not really in control of where they position their car on the exit. But, you know, they're aiming for the white line, ultimately, on the exit of the corner. If there's a car on the outside, you're both going to get cleaned out and it is game over. So, again, we've seen that a couple of times over the last couple of weeks where Marta Garcia in the second race has really started to grow within the sim racing. She's using her, again, racing IQ, not getting involved in every single battle as soon as she possibly can, and just picking her battles. Again, it might, on the aggregate of points score, be a negative. I'll tell you what, Neri Amati coming back through here on Tomaselli, and whoa, very, uh, very audacious move there. Maybe a bit of contact on the exit. I think Tomaselli might have every reason to be a little bit annoyed with that one. Yeah, I mean, that was an aggressive move from Marty. Tomaselli did well to avoid there being contact. She had to turn out of the corner, which is uh, obviously not a deal. And we see Marty Garcia here coming through Spoon Curve right on the back of Abby Eaton here. And with the moves we've seen their pull-offs in the first race at uh, um, 130 hour, I'm pretty sure she'll be managed to get the job done here. Oh, it's like a Hollywood film, isn't it? 130 hour. We've had the first film. We've had the sequel. And now we're here for the third installment. 130R, Marta Garcia around the outside of Abby Eaton. And Abby Eaton does not leave the room. Well, she does leave the room here. Can Marta Garcia go late on the brakes then? I'll tell you what, this is a great defensive display from Abby Eaton. Superb driving from Abby Eaton. And while she's showing that she has got a little bit of glimpses that she can hang with the front drivers in this W Series Esports League. And wow, this is now going to be the second time they go side by side drag racing down in towards the first corner. Then two laps remain of this race. And again, it's maybe not been crazy as race number one. But I tell you what, it's just been as exciting through the first part of turn one and then into the second. I guess it's officially two corners, but I like to see this as one corner with two apexes. Um, through the S's, they go once again then. Uh, Bell and Garcia, by the way, maybe not going to have it all her own way. It's only two and a half seconds now, Billy. And Jill Cover, the Czech driver really looking to pile that pressure on but this is the battle we want to be watching right now this is for a top five and well p4 is not far ahead here so marta garcia got to use every ounce of her ability to try and gain as many points as possible because i'll tell you what there's one driver that is going through the pack and that is bites Gavissa. she's overtaking kiyama and piria now although she's now 10 seconds behind silokova and silokova is not going to be any easy uh, opportunity to overtake that's for sure but it's all on marta garcia as it stands and well we got what we're looking at here billy p six currently two drivers in front one and a half laps to go we're talking about marta garcia going forward but i tell you what there's a wall in front of her right now and that's abby eaton she's not letting anything happen right now yeah i mean marta garcia here it's all about getting past abby eaton and not losing time in the process i think if she manages to get the job done at 130 r at corner where she'll be flat out and she won't be lifting and making the pass or compromising her line that'd be ideal really because uh, then she could kind of keep that momentum going through and won't lose any time to tasman pepper uh, the, the clock is running down though, so for me, she needs to get this move done now. And the, what we're seeing here from the onboard shot is Abby Eaton is actually sort of closing up to the back of another car. So she's not actually losing that much in a straight line as she would if she didn't have anyone in front. More oh, contact between the two drivers there. Abby not leaving any room here, but actually Garcia's got a pretty good exit. Late on the brakes then, down towards that final chicane. And well, opportunity knocks and she opens the door. Good stuff there then for Marta Garcia. And that was a very difficult move there. Eaton did not give an inch there, that's for sure. She had to indeed utilize the runoff area of AstroTurf, which is not where you want to position your car, especially an open wheel car. But she's made the move, she's in P5, and now one whole lap here to try and gain P4. Tasman Pepper is up next. The lead is only 1.8 seconds as well, so there's a lead battle going on. It's going to be interesting whether Ben and Garcia can indeed hold on to that. So we come through the S's though, Marta Garcia, not really an opportunity to make an overtake here unless, indeed, your fellow driver makes a mistake through here. And Pepper, well, she's been pretty strong throughout this eSports series so far. And I'm not expecting her to make a mistake through Sector 1. Uh, that is for certain. But as we then come up towards Sector 2 through the Degners, there might be an opportunity then up in towards Kobayashi. So we'll see. See what is indeed going to happen here. And you see actually Marta Garcia is super, super close then. Uh, again, the two Degners coming up. And is there a little bit of a gap there around the outside? I'll tell you what, she is shaping for the move. And while she gets it done as well, Abby Eaton may be able to follow through as well. Pepper loses out one and well, only is one position. And Marta Garcia has gone from taking her time, being nice and plus into attack mode 100%. And that was exactly what we needed to see from her on these last couple of laps. I wasn't sure whether she'd managed to get the job done for a top four, but that overtake, she got such a good exit out of the first sector. She followed, I saw the difference in the line between her following as she was taking slightly sort of tighter lines and cutting back more to get the exits, not so probably rolling as much speed through the middle of the corner as we saw from Pepper, who was in front with the better front down force. And uh, that for me, that just shows you the qualities of how sim racing is replicated in real life because that's exactly the sort of lines and 
sort of changes in position that you'd want to see in real life. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Superb stuff from all drivers in this mid for pack field. It's been a, a really good race too. Let's check out the lead though. And it has closed down then, but it is Bell and Garcia. And by my math, I believe we're about to see our sixth different winner here in the W Series Esports League. And well, Bell and Garcia will finally, she showed those flashes of brilliance, but she will finally cross the line and take the victory here in Suzuka. Superb stuff there. And well, I tell you what, it was again maybe not as crazy as race number one but wow the quality on show there in race number two well two hugely exciting races down one hopefully to go but let's turn our attention to commentary for our final race with luke and billy thank you lee it is race number three of round seven of the w series esports league and while if race one and two are anything to go by, we are in for an absolute treat here at Suzuka. It has been one of the most fast-paced, exhilarating experiences of my commentary career. I'm not going to lie. And of course, I am still joined by the legend that is Billy Munger. How you doing, bud? Well, after those two races, I've just caught my breath. And I'm looking forward to the third one now. Yeah, oh, be, to see excited Billy is always good. That means the racing's been very, very good indeed. Uh, and well, already we are seeing that Marta Garcia is a hundredth of a second faster than Visser in qualification. And we're on board with Silakova, who's lost second position in the standings. And well, a point to prove here. Yeah, she has. I mean, that, that there put her P4. You can see how close it is as well, the top five with Jill Kova doing a great job. Ain't only two and a bit temps away from Marta Garcia who currently leads by a hundredth. I mean, that just shows you the, the depth of the field, how tightly sort of condensed they are now. I mean, around a long circuit like this, it's nearly, like you say, nearly a two minute lap time as well. This is almost the length of Spa, probably the longest track other than Spa for these for these young drivers. And the fact it's so close after such a long lap, I mean, it's just quite unbelievable, really. Yeah, it is. And well, as we watch Vissa, I, I knew that was going to happen. Vissa yeah. then comes in and posts the 59-0. We saw a couple of 58s in practice uh, before, indeed, we started this broadcast. Uh, so we haven't quite seen that in the race. And I'm wondering whether that's nerves, because they've become a lot closer in terms of time, Billy. Uh, and they know exactly what a lap time means um, in terms of where they are on the grid. Again, you know, obviously, it's obvious you need to be at the front end, but it's become more and more key to victory uh, moving forward here i think these sort of shootout style qualifying sessions with not a lot of time on the clock uh, only by the time you get out the pits and warm the tires up you've probably got sort of two flying laps really to, to make the most of the tire um there's a lot of definitely a lot of pressure on these the drivers to deliver in such a short space of time well obviously in the practice sessions and stuff like that where we see the slightly quicker lap times they've had time to build everything up nice and gently and sort of adapt and and change lines accordingly to how they get on or well, in this it's straight in at a deep end two three laps go out there do a lap time and i think it's quite normal to see them sort of miss a couple of attempts uh, make a couple of errors only small errors but still errors on their their laps and uh, at the minute Vissa seems to be the more consistent of getting closer to her practice pace um and Marta Garcia here on a lap. It looks like a fairly good lap so far. We've not seen any real mistakes from her. Uh, this is still the, the quickest driver really for me on the field when it comes to one lap pace and certainly delivering it in qualifying sessions. I think she still has the edge, but uh, that's not to, no one's going to count Marta Garcia out when it comes to the racing. No, exactly that. Marta Garcia, we've seen uh, three times now this season, starting from second on the grid. With Vissa being a pole, managing to get the jump into turn number one. So again, It'll be a bonus if she goes pole position, but she knows that if she is second position, she has the tools in her arsenal to indeed produce that lightning start, get up into the lead, and well, potentially put us in for an absolute cracker uh, here. This is the final attempt then with one minute 50 seconds left. And well, it is Marta Garcia we are on board with. And actually, Vissa has just gone a little bit quicker again. So a 59.028, just shy of three tenths quicker than Marta Garcia. And did Garcia manage to improve on her time? I'm not too sure she did. She's still going to start second at the very, um, well, the very best, actually. Wood then in third again. So we're having the same three at the front end here. Tasman Pepper will be in P4. Caitlin Wood then has indeed stopped the car there. Uh, we've then got Sidokova, who will start in P5. Jokova in P6. And well, it is the front two. And actually, Marta Garcia did improve then. She's one tenth of a second off of the pace. But it is indeed Baitskavissa once again, who is on pole position. Here we are then, race three, the final race here of Suzuka. I am an excitable, sweaty mess. 
and we are about to go green then here for the final race of today and well there we go here we go down towards turn number one and well already Vissa trying to cover off then the potential move of Marta Garcia she knows that Garcia gets lightning starts here and you see then the Sidokova a very similarly to race number one. Oh, and Sidokova's lost it no so it's not similar there at all it's already come undone then for Sidokova who was P3 all on her own there again we saw that in qualifying but she just kept losing load on the car and the car was just Indeed, skating across it like it was an ice pond. Uh, and there we go. It's loss of, well, down to the back of the grid order here. P18 now for Sidokova. And, well, Marta Garcia then with a huge opportunity then to make P2 in this eSports League standings all her own. Yeah, I mean, that, for me, this has been sort of summing up Sidokova uh, this weekend here in Suzuka. It's a tricky track, and we've just didn't seen too many mistakes from her. I mean, we've making mistakes like that on the first corner of the race where you just need to set up into your position don't try anything silly just keep it on the circuit i mean we've seen that maturity from her in other races but it just seems like here at suzuka we've just not seen that she's 17 we can we can let her off that's for sure um and it's stuff that she can learn from as well like if you don't make mistakes you can't learn that's a fact of life um but yeah we're on board there with but Marta Garcia, maybe a little cheeky move here. No, nope, not quite. Oh, no, there's a mistake there from Marta. And actually, it probably would have been more beneficial for her to try and make a move up the inside there. Just completely lost the rear of the car. Slides across, scrub speed off as well. And also, the tyres may be overheating here. But she is in P2. And, well, it looks like we may get a round two here of the Bites Gavis and Marta Garcia show here at Suzuka. But in third position is Tasman Pepper. Marty's in fourth. Agron then is in fifth. She managed to make it to the grip, which is fantastic news. Koyama then in her home GP. P6 then in this third feature race. And well, can she get a positive result then for all of the home fans? But as it stands then, it is between Bites Gavissa and Marta Garcia as they come around the final corner on lap number one. And well, Garcia just got a bit of a poor exit there, but the slipstream will indeed get her out of jail here for sure as they come down along the start finish straight. And well, will Marta be able to make a move? This has made it very obvious that if you're going to come and make a move on me, it's around the outside. And Marta Garcia, not going to be able to. And there you go, Billy. You're talking about if you're on the inside and you're committed, there's no chance of someone making a move. And Bicycle Visser just proved you completely right. Yeah, Marta Garcia at this stage of the race, though, looks like she's got really good pace. She really seems to have come out of the blocks firing here. I mean, that mistake that we saw up at Spoon Curve, it looked like she generally got caught out by how early Visser was on the brakes. Um, and like you say, probably if she'd gone to the inside, I reckon she maybe would have made that move stick and it would have been better off there. But the fact that she's been able to sort of hold range to, to Visser, who has the fastest lap in both of the first two races, so let's not deny her, the fact that she is quick. Um, but Marta Garcia here, her race craft, it seems like she just brings her A game when it comes to the racing. And, and she did that in qualifying. I wouldn't be surprised if she was getting more pole positions, pole positions than she already has done. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Professional racing driver Billy Munger just agreed with me on a technical part of my commentary. So that means I do know what I'm on about every now and again. But you're right. You know, qualifying is great. But ultimately, this is where you earn the big points in the race. This is where you've got to indeed um, you know, get yourself in check for that eight, nine lap race that we will have here at Suzuka. Uh, and that's where you earn your dough. Uh, in P3 then is Tasman Pepper. Neri and Marty then we're on board with just in behind. So there's a very similar battle here for the final step on the podium. Uh, and although, although we've seen uh, Garcia and Vissa go side by side a few times, they've not really lost any time to P3 and P4. They're definitely the outright quickest two drivers on the circuit i tell you what pepper under a real load of pressure here from uh, neri and marty and marty we would like to potentially make it three different spaniards winning here at suzuka there's an opportunity here and she's got to be hoping that the front two do indeed start battling properly i tell you what that's a hell of a move mind a little bit of contact there with a bit of a block pass on the exit but it's a legitimate move perfect move actually and neri and marty was making a way forward and actually we did see that marta garcia and vissa went side by side as well but ultimately, these would have lost time in P3 and P4. Down in towards then uh, turn number one once again. And well, this are indeed trying to defend here. Marta Garcia, ooh, just trying to sneak a little opportunity at the inside through the second phase then of turn one. Uh, again, it is a one turn for me. Uh, through the S's, then we go. And well, it looks like Garcia's just lost a little bit of time there. So going defensive for Vissa, but she's still really quick through the first sector. Yeah, she just, Marta Garcia, having a sneaky look up the inside in the second sort of part of that first corner it is one corner really where the line sort of dictates you it's one steering movement you don't really like to steer in and steer out there uh, normally when you're doing stuff like that it means you're not rolling enough speed through the corner so it's good to see that these girls are really making it into one corner um really attacking the entry that they need to be in order to get the lap time and you can see the front two already pulling a gap out two and a bit seconds 
that move. Marty's actually dropped back behind Pepper, I've noticed as well. Turn so one. Pepper maybe, uh, yeah, and the entry to turn one got that move back. Uh, but it was a great pass from Marty into that, that chicane round the outside. I mean, that just shows you again the level and the depth of the overtaking abilities um, of these drivers. It's really good to watch. Yeah, watching Kiyama here trying to defend then against Hawkins as they come up towards her fellow uh, fellow compatriot, Kabashi Kobayashi corner. Uh, so Kabashi then, Kobayashi corner, and she holds on to P6. And I've got no favourites here, Billy, but come on, Kiyama. You can do it. Get this big result today in Japan. I'd love to see it. The fans would love to see it. Um, but she seems like she's got some serious pace here. And I'll tell you what, well, Marta Garcia is going to take a page out of the old hymn sheet of This Is Written as they come down towards the old final chicane. And, well, it is a move around the outside of 130R again. And I'm just coming out with random words right now because I don't know what's going on. This is really good stuff. And Marta Garcia leads again. She's taking a page out of Vissa's book there, getting there the move around there the outside. There it is. Outside. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Billy. Yeah, I mean, the fact that so many moves have happened in these races at 130R is so surprising. Look, Vissa's, look at that entry speed. Oh, she's just not, again, it's the two-part corner that really pays favour to whoever's on the inside. The fact that Vissa there drove so aggressively on the entry and really committed herself to going around the outside of Marta Garcia. It would have been a great move, but Marta Garcia, wow, she is um, really delivering when it comes to where the points are, main points are scored. They are taking pages from each other's hymn books that they've each other written at this point. I can't believe I just said that. And that is definitely two quotes in one. Um, but as we stand, Marta Garcia is in P1. This is still in P2. Billy, thank you for digging me out there, mate. That was brilliant. Because I'm. this is just such crazy stuff. I don't know what's going on. Uh, through the Deglers, they come once again here on lap number three. And it is a race lead then for Garcia. Three tenths of a second then at play. Pepper in third spot and Marty in fourth. And again, I just don't, even with these two going side by side every single lap, I just don't think they've quite got the outright pacing behind here to really challenge for the race victory. So I think we're going to see a proper duke out here between these two here. With 12 minutes ago, an extra five minutes. And we've seen that those uh, extra five minutes have been absolutely vital in these races in terms of tyre temperatures. Yeah, this tyre degradation is an, an extra challenge for the drivers. Five more minutes is also the concentration element of being a driver that comes into play. The fact that they've used to the sort of the 15 minute distances, but they'll be looking up at the clock after they've done that with five minutes still to go. And when a, you've got a battle that's so close like this, it's, it's going to take your concentration to be on point the whole 20 minutes. And Marta Garcia, it just seems like when she gets in front, she's got more experience than Vissa. Um, so far, I say that, and then Vissa goes around the outside. Oh my god, are they going to touch? She's so close. Oh, that was so close there. I thought Vissa had got it, but I tell you what, she is going to have another bite on this cherry, that's for sure. No slipstream to work with, though, because indeed she wasn't right behind Marta Garcia. So they are going to drag race, and now Vissa decides to get the slipstream. I think that might get Marta Garcia out of jail here. Down and towards turn number one again, and Marta holds on, but runs a little bit wide, not quite left the door wide open. And you're talking about concentration, Billy. I'm not even in the car, and I can't get words out right now. So how these two drivers are performing at this level is beyond me. It's really great driving to see. We've seen actually on the last couple of overtakes that we've seen at the front, Pepper and Marty are starting to close that gap a bit as well. And I mean, if this turned into a four-way, four or even a five-way fight for the lead, uh, I don't know how we'd be managing to get words out then. I'm not opposed to it. I'm not going to lie. I am not opposed to that. I'm excited for that. Uh, but we're on board now with Naomi Schiff. By the way, there are still battles happening everywhere on this circuit, by the way. It looks like Hawkins may have actually overtaken Koyama as well. Belen Garcia, uh, race winner from, indeed, race number two. Uh, one of my family members now, the Garcia clan. Uh, that is uh, from me changing my name, as Lee said. <laughs> but yeah, Naomi Shift then in P10, trying to make the move on Tomaselli. Tomaselli had a bit of an indifferent week this week, for sure. Uh, he's making a few driver errors. But I tell you what, she's doing a good job here. Goes defensive very early there. Makes it very, very obvious. But actually, he's going to run out a little bit wide. Too quick, too hot into that corner. And well, an opportunity there for Naomi Schiff. Always nearly contact between the two drivers there. And uh, well, that could have ended in tears. It didn't. We're still going strong here then. Up towards the uh, uh, to spoon now. But what was... Although, oh, oh, dear, oh, dear. Contact. They got too close. And yeah, that's, that's not, not the best thing I've ever seen, Billy. That's for sure. Yeah, it looked like sort of Naomi shift there was at one point committed to the inside through the kink. The next thing you know, that door closed and she decided that the outside was the way to go. But you've got to be able to judge the distance to your front wing. And it just looked there, there was a little bit of lack of concentration. She didn't quite judge it right. Uh, and uh, that's not how you want to see battles unfold, unfortunately. 
No, that is for sure. And we've seen that Marta Garcia and Visser had that little battle on a previous lap. And I'm wondering, because Visser's dropped right back here, whether that little bit of contact we saw out the final chicane, whether she's got some front wing damage. And actually, yes, you can see it there on the front left of her wing or the front right from, from her perspective. There's a little bend up. So I think she's struggling here. Yeah, there definitely is. Definitely is there damage, uh, Billy. So that is going to affect her around a circuit such as this. And now put her into the clutches of Pepper, Marty, potentially maybe Agrin, Hawkins as well. Because again, it's, we're going to see now from my earlier statement how downforce dependent a circuit such as Suzuka is. And she's just losing so much time to our race leader. So Marta Garcia has been given uh, a bit of a carte blanche at this point to go out and win this race. Yeah, I mean, the gap is at 2.2 seconds already. Uh, on a lap time that's nearly two minutes long, front wing damages, especially at a high speed circuit with a lot of fast flowing corners. Uh, and it's all, it's all about the sequence of the corners as well, because if you struggle with understeer through the first part of the first sector, you're going to be offline and then struggle even further as you get further around that sector through the left, right. Uh, there's so many of them in that first sector. It is a real challenge for the driver when everything is on point, when the car's handling right. Uh, and when you've got understeer, and she probably hasn't done many laps with damage on the car, I would have suspected if she has it in practice, I imagine she would have reset the car and sort of gone out again. Obviously, she's practicing for quality and race where you obviously prepare for best scenario where you don't have any damage. And this is going to be a test for her. Now we're going to see Bicycle Vissa's defensive credentials put to the test here. Tasman Pepper, of course, a race winner previously uh, in the W Series Esports League. And I tell you what, it's almost going to be a gimme here up towards 130R. And is she going to be clear here? I'm not too sure. I tell you what, Visser is going to fight for this position. But again, with that damage, how much can she fight? Again, Pat Pepper's going to go around the outside, uses a bit of AstroTurf there for the safety element of the move. And well, there it is. Position two then for Tasman Pepper. And Pepper starting to... Uh, start to come good again we thought that after a race victory a couple of weeks ago that next last week was going to be the time where she could really assert herself into the top picture in terms of the esports league standings and well it's taken to race three today but she's there she's in p2 right now and uh well i think this is not going to be able to hang with her at this point it's all about whether this can indeed hold on to the position three and whether marty can get up ahead of her yeah, I mean, Vissa would be hoping this would have been one of the 15-minute races rather than the 20-minute feature race. Even five minutes even longer than she would have had before with the front wing damage. You can see, to be fair, they're behind Marty. If she loses that position, there's a 3.2 second gap to Agron. Um, so she has got a bit of time to play with, but it does seem like it is costing her a lot of lap time at the minute. Yeah, it's been huge as well. And it's, it's not just, you know, the lap time, it's the ability to defend, having that confidence within the car uh you know we've seen her able to go side by side with marta garcia around 130 we've seen an overtake from her round there we've seen potential overtakes into turn one where they've been side by side so you know having the confidence in the car with no damage to then having you know just a slight doubt in your mind against the track where you've got to be committed at every turn to really maximize the time you know that's got to be huge here we're on board then with again race winner from race number two Belen garcia trying to make her way up into p7 and uh, ooh, very, very close there indeed. She's up and behind Koyama. Koyama, though, doing a pretty good job here. Pretty solid top 10 as it stands. P7. Can she get this P7, though? Yeah, I mean, she is doing a good job so far. I mean, we've seen her struggle a little bit in this esports league so far. She hasn't had any many standout results. And the fact this is her home race, she's probably put maybe a bit more pressure on herself, maybe committed a bit more time to, to get on top of things. She probably knows the track as well from her experience of either driving around there or just being in the facility of the likes of Suzuka obviously living and coming from Japan herself. Um, I mean, at the minute, she's positioned her car well. She's She looks fairly in control of the position, but Belen Garcia winning race two, she will be confident of maybe making a pass here. So I really, really want to see a result from uh, Kuyama. Just just for her, she's put in so much time. Oh, a bit of contact there between her and Garcia. I tell you what, elbows out. And, well, not giving up that position easily. But she is, obviously, when all of these uh, drivers practice, she's up at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning to do this, um, just for the races and practice sessions and all that. So the commitment shown is huge. It'd be great to see her get a result. But I tell you what, she's uh, she's potentially going to lose P7 here. And Bella Garcia, of course, full of confidence right now, uh, now moves up into P7. And now she wants to try and make her way a little bit further forward. But I tell you what, Koyama is not going to let her get away. Up through the S as we go then. And, uh, again, these two separated by around about a tenth of a second. You can see then that Garcia just able to stretch her legs a little bit here uh, as they come then out of the S's before they come up towards the Degners. With five minutes to go here. I think it's going to be a pretty comfortable P8 with five seconds behind to Naomi Schiff. And then Grisham is in P10. 
Um, but she'll want to try and get one more position. But we're on board now with Neria Marty. She's in behind Vissa. So Vissa, again, of course, lost out to Pepper a couple of laps ago. Uh, and it looks like we've lost Agrin then uh, from this battle. So Agrin has just dropped down. She dropped by well, 3.9 seconds behind, so she dropped a little bit further down, um, Billy. Uh, but again, Marty not able to indeed get past Vissa. So Vissa showing some resilience here. Yeah, I think what you f we find with a circuit like Suzuka, where we've seen the slipstream is quite important to sort of make an overtake stick. I think what you've got for Vissa now, which she needs to be able to hang on to, I think if she loses the gap to Pepper, which it actually looks like she's just dropped out of that window now or getting a toe, and this is where we might see her come under a bit of pressure from Marty. I think that's just been sort of dragging her along and keeping her in the mix here, being in the slipstream, which obviously she wasn't getting when Marta Garcia sort of started to, to drop her by a couple of seconds. And uh, I think, to be honest, it's looking like that she may just be out of range of the toe. And Marty trying around the outside, a bit of contact on the entry there. This is going to compromise both their exits, but the crucial thing for Vissa, she's out of the slipstream now to Pepper. So Pepper, it looks like, is going to get a bit of a break, not have to look in her mirrors, and uh, this is might this might change the race for Vissa now. Yeah, Pepper's going to be the one smiling with this, looking in her rearview mirror. But I tell you what, Vissa then tries to break the toe here around the outside, and Marty will have no idea that Vissa's got damage to the car. She may have, she may kind of figure that out as the race goes, but she won't be able to see the front of that car, so she will have no idea. And who's that there? That is, I believe, Sid Kova that is being lapped there. And while we, you know, we saw the mistake at, on lap number one, we didn't. Looked like she'd had any contact with anybody, but unfortunately, it seems like she's now going to finish down in P18, so not a good day for her. And well, this is only going to give bigger an opportunity here for Marta Garcia, who's currently leading her second race of the day. That chance to really extend her lead in second position in this championship. Yeah, she's been on great form. I mean, we have she hasn't had even the pole positions for race one or three, but she's looking like she's going to pick up two wins. So she's collecting points there and fourth in the reverse grid race as well. So this is a huge points haul for her. Well, maybe fastest lap as well. We don't know that. But with Vissa, who we know just gets fastest laps by just turning up, it seems, every single week. She's that fast. Um, but she's got damage this time. So, you know, maybe an opportunity then for an extra bonus point as well. But I tell you what, look at this battle still happening right now. Then Vissa going as defensive as possible. Uh, as they, well, actually, no, Marty's got ahead here. So Marty on the podium then uh, as it stands. And Vissa, she kind of really doesn't have the tools to work with to get back up to P3. I'd be very surprised. It was kind of a, I defend P3, well, that's it kind of deal here. But... You never know. Vaiskovisa does Vaiskovisa things. We're living in a Vaiskovisa world at this point. That's how good she's been. Um, but again, she is, to be fair, she is closing in. So that slipstream is huge, even with damage. Can she go lay on the brakes here? Again, it's all about having a confidence in the car. And I don't think she's quite got that right now. Although she has got a great exit there from the last she came. We saw Marty when she turned in there. She obviously saw Vista in the mirrors. Maybe he's made a slight error, ran a bit wide. And I think for me, if Vista doesn't get the move done here with the amount of sort of damage she has if marty can nail that first sector she might be, it might be game over for her hopes of a podium Neria marty they're very late on the defense there i think uh i think Vissa was trying to find some sort of gap there on a pit exit which indeed does run out very quickly um in terms of the grass showing up so i don't think that move was ever really on uh, and then she had to pull out wide and well marty showing that experience now showing uh you know she's been here for this is her seventh week of course racing every single week and She'll want that podium. She'll, she's fight right to the death with that podium right now. Four tenths of a second separates the two again. Marta Garcia leading the way here. We've got one more lap remaining, I believe. Might be tight here. This might be the final lap. I don't know. It's going to be very, very close as to whether this is the final lap. Uh, Pepper then is 3.6 seconds behind. Marty then is in third spot. Vissa in fourth. Agron fifth. Hawkins is in sixth. Then Ben and Garcia, who has had a race victory, sixth winner of the series so far. So that's six winners in seven rounds. I think that's pretty damn good going. I still believe there's going to be eight or nine. So hopefully the, uh, one of those two numbers comes in for my sweepstake. That'd be great. Uh, Koyama now is in P8. And actually, Bell and Garcia has just made a move on Hawkins by the looks of things. Uh, we've got 35 seconds remaining here. So I believe this is going to be the final lap of the race then. So we are on board with Marta Garcia. It's been such a good day for her, Billy. And well, it looks like she's going to crown off the day with another race victory. Yeah, I mean, she's been... What's been impressed me the most of her is that she hasn't been on pole. The first race, she got the start exactly how she wanted to. But we saw Vissa come back at her, and it wasn't as simple as Vissa getting into the lead and then leaving her, and that was it. It actually looked like Marta's been the more dangerous of the two, I'd say, when they've been battling wheel-to-wheel. -wheel. It looks like she is 
bit more comfortable with the sort of close nature of the fight and we've seen between them today and she's definitely come out on top in that front because she's now looking at two wins and I, I think is that her crossing the line now she's weaving up the straight yeah she's done she's the win race winner race three then here at suzuka in the w series esports league is going to go to marta garcia and it was at the start of this series it was like saying this week in week out race in race out and now it's a bit more like that with garcia